kid's building blocks are pretty much done, right? You'd cut a piece of wood into a square and that's it. There's not much more that you can add to that. But, you know, as technologies evolve and we move past cavemen beating rocks together, maybe it is time to revisit the kid's building block. So let's talk about how you design a kid's building block with 3D printing. So this is not the first time this kind of stuff has been possible. Lego has utilized new technologies to make blocks that never existed before. I mean, before they came along, there were just wooden blocks and you might have had, I don't know, a tinker toy or something like that. But with injection molding and high precision injection molding, Lego was able to create a building kit that never existed before and functioned in a way that nobody else ever had before. They used a new technology in order to create a new type of block. Well, the challenge with blocks and with 3D printing is the fact that blocks take up a lot of space. They're heavy, they're dense. 3D printing a solid brick of something is not really very efficient because there are better ways of doing it. You can use molding, you can use wood, you can use all kinds of things to make a block that just stands up and piles on top of each other. There are cheaper ways of knocking out a bunch of that kind of stuff. Heck, you can just knock off a branch and give a kid a bunch of round cylinders and let them start stacking them up. They don't know the difference, they're three. What do they care? But if you want to build something unique and original, the new Tinker Toy, the new Lego, 3D printing gives you a competitive advantage and a new way of going about it. So when we looked at this project, we thought, how about we use vase mode? Now, vase mode is a challenging way of producing parts because it requires a design expertise in and of itself. We've talked about the BeFriends line that was created by Binet in order to show how vase mode products could be premium and really unique, but still structural. So how do you apply a lot of that to these? Vase mode takes the outer contours of whatever the 3D model is and just does a single outline there. This is very material efficient, very lightweight, and very fast to produce something. Most vase mode things are vases. They're kind of squishy and flat, and they're like a sheet of paper that's been wrapped around into a cylinder. But the issue is, is that it doesn't generally have much structure. So how do you make it structural? Well, you start giving it depth. You give it wobbles and angles and creases. What we've done is we've gone ahead and designed a brick. But instead of doing a simple square, where if we printed it in vase mode, we just have a square with a hole in the top that would be basically a little square cup, which is not very interesting and kids don't really enjoy that. We wanted to invent something new. We wanted a geometry where these blocks can start to lock together and intermingle and stack in different ways. But in order to do this, you need structure. We can't just crush these with our hands they need to have some strength. So in order to do that, we designed this kind of prismatic shape so that it folds in on itself and you gain thickness. As it goes around the outer edge, it builds up more and more and more and creates something really interesting. Now it's printed on its side like this so that if you're looking top down, you can see all the way through and you have these two outer edges. Now, each of these sides print out and that's all fine and you have a continuous loop up there. But then you get to the top and you have a situation where you can't actually do vase mode up here because you would have a single thin wall, which is now fragile. So in order to do that, you have to start doing subtle things. You actually start cutting through the wall. So we have a small slot up here so that this entire edge of this block is still one continuous outline. And that allows us to create the structure, the thickness, allows it to fold in on itself to where you create this kind of composite part where multiple planes are interacting with each other so that it doesn't just twist and it's not just a film that's been folded together or a sheet of paper. It actually has structure that can hold up for a minute. And since we're using 3D printing, we're able to create this shape. This trapezoidal prismatic type of a shape is very difficult to manufacture normally because you need a mold coming in from multiple different directions, shoving it all together, a lot of releases. It's just complicated. And in order to keep it perfectly square, you are not actually able to do that with molding because you have to have draft angles. There's ways around that, but it's really challenging. 3D printing gives you so much more freedom. And since these are produced in vase mode, they use very little material, are produced very quickly so these can be produced for pennies and dimes and nickels rather than dollars. So they are cost effective compared to other ways of making a kid's block. Now there's a lot more that you would have to do with this in order to make it consumer ready. Now one of the first steps of bringing a product to market is setting up a company, setting up an LLC. This might sound complicated, but the sponsor of today's video makes it very easy. Zen Business. 
Zen Business is an all-in-one solution to help you start and grow your business. So if you're looking to take your 3D printing passion to the next level by creating something like these building blocks, Zen Business can help you get a company set up. Whether that be forming an LLC or doing state paperwork, they can help with all of that. So now you don't have to worry about that paperwork or the legal jargon or compliance requirements. Zen Business has the resources available to take care of all of that for you. This includes things like registered agent services, expense tracking, and even creating a business bank account. It's like you've got a business partner who takes care of all the boring paperwork for you while you focus on making awesome new products and making customers happy here. And the best part is, is that it's straightforward and affordable. Zen Business has plans starting at $0 plus just state fees. So if you're ready to take your passion for 3D printing to the next level, go ahead and check out www.zblinks.com forward slash slant 3D and let them handle all the boring stuff so that you can focus on the actual fun parts of designing awesome new parts and pieces and figuring out how to sell them to customers who really love them. Now, if this was for kids and particularly for kids under three, you have to start dealing with the issues of like child safety and that kind of stuff, which means that you need to be selecting materials and continuing to improve the design even more. Right now, we printed these demonstrations in PLA, which is both very eco-friendly and a quick, easy way to get stuff knocked out if it's for kids 10 plus, but those kids aren't generally working with blocks. If you're wanting to work with kids who are younger, you need this to be very durable to where somebody can bite on it and not swallow any chunks or pieces. The 3D printing process can create a part that is that reliable, but you have to use a material that holds up that well and doesn't delaminate or crush if we start cracking it and having pieces peel off like we did with this demonstrator right here. In order to get that, you might want to look at a material like TPU to where you could tear and twist and pull and no part would ever come off so it can actually meet child safety testing standards. So there are ways to make a final product with 3D printing that will get there and this demonstration is just meant to show you the potential of the design methodology to create something more unique. Because again, this is very lightweight. Now you are able to create a kid's toy and set of blocks that are able to be shipped through fulfillment services like Amazon or through our print on demand service and are still very cost effective. Normally, kids building blocks are just really expensive to move around because a box full of wood blocks weighs a ton, even though the blocks have to be affordable, but you have to spend 50 bucks shipping the box around. This lets you create an equivalent type of experience, but it's much lighter weight because you're able to create these geometries that just weren't possible before. So this is a classic example of where 3D printing creates a way of making things that's never existed before. So now if you use that technology to create a unique type of item and leverage what it gives you around lightweighting, complex geometries, print on demand, mass production, you can create something to where you have no upfront cost because you no longer have molds, you can iterate on it, and you can create something that just never existed before, so now you have a competitive advantage. Just like when Lego used injection molding to compete against wooden tools, you can now use 3D printing to create something that might compete against Lego. So let us know if you are creating some kind of a block down there, go ahead and send it over to us for quoting or upload it to one of our print on demand apps. We love seeing these types of inventions and love educating people about what is now possible now that 3D printing is able to mass produce really good quality products that just simply could never exist before. Have a great day, everybody.